to the cup tv where we put the real and the tea in reality and where you can always come to us first to quench your reality thirst i am your girl on your resident evil diva and i'm here to give the tea spill the tea and drink the tea because you know let's be some tea her. and if you have some tea you know what to do hit me up i am drinking some the last of my water here <laughs> i'm looking like david now it's down mm -hmm. here but I'm still drinking it, and I'll be finished with it before this episode is over, I am sure. But if I was going to drink anything else, I would definitely be drinking it out of my cup mug. Uh-huh, uh-huh. And if you keep scrolling down in the description below, you'll find the link to lanajeescreations.etsy.com where you can get said cup mug and any of our other cup merch. You know, just pick that up right there. And we do ship internationally and domestically in the U.S., so there are no excuses. And I'm looking at everybody, because why not? Get your cup merch first. And I'm David Healy, and uh, excited to talk more trust. Um, I don't have a good intro for the trust, so watch, watch the other videos. I have plenty of good intros, but not for this one yet. But um, I am also like Lana. I'm drinking the last little remaining gulps of my water. <laughs> you know me too well. Bit. I do. I do. I love the I little. Think I have more than you. You do. I think you do because I'm very at the very end. Yep. Of my... Yep. Yep. Yeah. I'm a few rings up. It's all right. We 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 did it. We got it, and it's we're gonna finish it. We'll finish the water in this episode. I promise. We'll, and we'll have finish... new water. We'll finish these episodes too, hopefully. <laughs> we're, we're definitely going to finish these episodes. As you know, our last episode, we left you on a cliffhanger because that's what they did to us. They left us on a cliffhanger. So we did it to you. I know, cruel. We <laughs> shouldn't have done that. But we did it. But we're back to talk about it. We came right back. No long waiting times in between the episodes. Because we're going to drop these on the same day. So they'll be right there. Back to back. You got it. You'll get the whole thing. One shebang. But of course, as we always do, please subscribe to this channel. If you check this out, you like what we're talking about. And I know you like what me and David are talking about. Come on. Duh, it's me and David. You, you you like to hear what we're talking about. Hit the subscribe button, the follows, the shares, all the things to say you support us and we support you. And we appreciate your support. And if you have anything, we'll support you too. Uh, <laughs> um, follow us on our main channel at the Cup of Reality and our uh, Eurovision channel where we talk all things you're mostly all things Eurovision, mostly all things drag on the other ones and uh, you can support us over there as well and if you want to support us uh, with a little, you know, cha-ching cha-ching, all you gotta do is go to our main channel and the little money dollar sign is there under all the comments. You can leave super thanks and mm -hmm. we appreciate you because all the buddies that you donate, you send to us will go right back into this podcast so we can keep up in our game and giving you the best content that we could possibly give you. So we appreciate you in advance for any financial help that you want to give us. So thanks so much. <laughs> now back to the trust. Episode three, things are getting a little tense and a little, you know, we just saw Mama J go off and let folks know how she felt about how Jake handled the last trust competition or situation that they had. And um, mostly everybody agreed, some didn't. And... Um, uh, Brian still trusts Jake. Mm -hmm. He's like, look, look, I still trust him. Because we saw Brian say at the end of the episode, if he sees how things are happening and he sees how things are going with Jake and how people are reacting to Jake. So if he got a letter, he get voted out, 
it is what it is. Yep. You know, he wasn't go push it, but he wasn't go stop it. Yep. We love to see adaptability. <laughs> I'm I'm glad that he's not boxing himself into an alliance with somebody he doesn't want to go down with the sinking ship because uh, that actually kind of surprised me. Um, I thought Brian would be the type of person that would just have undying loyalty and like he would never question anything with Jake. So, yeah, I agree. I think... Brian would have been the one that I thought would have been like, Jake is my man. I'm loyal to him to a fault. That's it. That's all. Like, but he showed a little that he probably wouldn't if if push came to shove. Mm -hmm. But then the next day he was like, I trust Jake completely. So I was like, well, <laughs> maybe, maybe not. Maybe, <laughs> maybe I got too excited. And he slept on it and was like, you know what? No, no, I trust this man completely it is what it is and that's what it is it's like he just has to learn you know how to say things to people because he feels like jake doesn't know how to talk to people mm -hmm. it's funny because when i saw this cast uh, if i had made assumptions mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. brian might have been high on my list for the most problematic person. Mm -hmm. But mm -hmm. you know what? I feel like he's definitely on the lower end when it comes to the guys for, for being problematic. He's not perfect, but he's shown, um, he's shown a willing to learn mm -hmm. and grow. And uh, yeah, I think he, he actually has a really good heart. So I I'm liking Brian. I, I am too. I think he's one of the nicer ones that I would, you know, we're like, okay, I can root for him. He's mm -hmm. rootable. He's right. definitely rootable. Um, then we had a conversation that Bryce decides he needs to tell his secret. Mm -hmm. It's like, look, the secret is eating away at me, and I feel the need to share the secret with somebody, somebody I trust. And he chooses Lindsay. He feels he can trust Lindsay with the secret. And he tells Lindsay that he is a millionaire. And um, she's just like, wow. Yep. <laughs> she's like, okay, cool. She's like, you just really want to tell somebody, huh? Yep. I was like, yeah, I did. I just need to do it. And I was like, I don't know. I wonder if Lindsay was like genuinely proud of him for saying it and telling, or was she like, because she said, I don't know why he told me. I was like, is she like taking that information, storing it in her back pocket, do what she needs to whip it out on him? Or is she kind of like, no, for real, I'm really proud of you. Mm -hmm. I actually got more of the latter. I, mm -hmm. I, I felt like it worked out well with who he decided to tell. Honestly, he shouldn't have told anybody, but I did feel like Lindsay was somebody who wasn't, who was not going to use it against him. Mm -hmm. And I think she instantly clocked that he kind of just was itching to tell somebody. And he's had a hard time, like not talking about like all of his expensive things and his lifestyle. Mm -hmm. And he just wanted to be able to talk about that. Mm -hmm. And she clocked that. But mm -hmm. I think she was somebody who, even though she saw like that angle, mm -hmm. it wasn't going to bother her mm -hmm. um, and she wasn't going to use it against him. Um, mm -hmm. I don't think everybody else reacts the same way as we may see mm -hmm. soon enough. Uh, but so far, I was like, eh, wish, you had, wish you hadn't told anybody, but it didn't blow up in your face. Right. You chose the right person to tell, but... Honestly, I, I agree. I was like, he shouldn't have told nobody. I would have mm -hmm. just left it alone and didn't say nothing because you saw, with seeing the reaction of some people when the secret came out, I would have been like, oop, that's <laughs> the key to keep that to myself the entire time. Like, I wouldn't tell anybody. But, case to ask her all, you felt like you need to say something. Mm -hmm. Um. Then we get this conversation. Uh, this one was an interesting one. Uh, Talu goes to uh, Julie and expresses some concern over how close she's getting with Jake. Uh, she doesn't want that to cloud her judgment. 
she's a little bit worried that if it comes down to it, Julie might choose Jake over them. Mm -hmm. And Julie actually expresses concern the other way. She says, I've actually thought about it that maybe you and Winnie would choose each other over me and that Jake would be more loyal to me. So mm -hmm. it kind of like, it seemed like it was a really good call that Tolu brought this up to her because this was her chance to kind of solidify that trust mm -hmm. and really bring them in as a core because I think Julie was drifting. Yes. And she still may drift. Yes. We may get to it more later on. Yes. Uh, but I think she really needs to reassure her because her mind is definitely looking towards a straight white man. Yes. I mean, because I'm what a game like this. I'm like, I don't mind splitting the money two, three, four ways. You know what I mean? Like, if we go just have a core, if we can break it down where we vote out and it's just the last three of us remaining or mm -hmm. four of us, I'm okay with that. I'm not that greedy where I'm like, I want to take it all for myself in this type of game. But also, you don't know if everybody else is thinking the same way you're thinking, if everybody feels the same way you're feeling. So I understand each, both of them bringing up the point because, yeah, it looked like Julie was drifting a little bit to Jake and Tulu and Winnie were concerned, but I, it also makes sense for Julie to feel that way with Tulu and Winnie because it's like, are we coming with duos, duos, and duos? Because if y'all got a duo, I need a duo. And mm -hmm. they're like, no, because I consider us a trio that right. we could all go and have some money. But you're looking at him as a duo, which is, excludes us. So I think the conversation was good to have. Yeah. I'm glad they had it. Did it solidify and make everything tighter and more close-knit, we'll see. Yeah. And Tolu says, it'd be one thing if he was a good guy, but he's not. <laughs> <laughs> it would be. He, she was like, I don't know if he... In that moment, I was like, I don't want Tolu to push too hard. Like, this mm -hmm. man ain't no good. He ain't good enough for you, da 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 Because that usually has the opposite effect exactly. with a lot of women. It's like, how are you going to tell me what's good for me? You ain't do this to me. This man is good for me. And we tend to go against our girls because we're trying to prove them wrong, make a statement, make a point. And this man, is, he won't mean he good for me. And that can be the furthest from the truth. But we don't see that because we just like, you know, I want to make a statement. So I was, I was hoping to, I was glad to didn't push too, too hard. I still think she pushed a little bit, a little bit mm -hmm. much, but it apparently Julie didn't take it all the way there, but. Right. She does make it clear. She doesn't want to vote him out. Right. She does say that. And I'm like, I mean, you need somebody who go not vote you out for a good chunk of the time. And if you really want to be greedy, take them out at the end, you know, towards the end, that'd be, you know, solidify your your spot as a. Because <laughs> could you imagine it getting down to like three or four and or five, and it's the three of them and or the four of them and and Jake, and they like, sorry, Jake, and Julie leads the charge, and she's like, yeah, he gotta <laughs> go. I'll be like, oh, well, I guess I was wrong about you, right. girl. <laughs> But who knows? We'll see. Mm -hmm. um. And we kind of talked about it, but after this is where we get the conversation between Tolu and uh, Jake. Uh, oh, that's where because Julie told him to talk to him. Right, right. Um, but yeah, I, I see what you're saying. I do think there was at least a little bit of genuine concern uh, from Jake. Um, the fact that he, like, I don't know if this was something Julie brought up, but he called out the fact that, oh, it occurred to me afterwards that I talked about Bryce's power being taken away. And I didn't even think about your power was also That's taken what away. makes me believe that he didn't do this whole conversation without being mm. prodded to this whole conversation. Because if you didn't even think about it then, 
and you had time to think about it before, you would have wanted to go talk to Tulu anyway. Mm-hmm. You wouldn't have needed Julie like, I need you to go talk to Tulu. I think she told him that, but we didn't hear the whole conversation. I feel like it was a whole lot more in that conversation than you need to go talk to Tulu. It was like, you need to go talk to Tulu. She is feeling this type of way. You keep calling her African queen. You didn't consider her to go to the vault when you said the whole reason you sent Vice, Bryce to the vault is because he didn't have his power. She didn't have. I feel like the whole conversation is her telling him everything so he could be like, oh, oh. Because I just don't think he thought about it on his own because mm-hmm. he just don't seem like the man to do that because his actions in this game have not shown him to be self-aware of what is happening. So I don't think he was aware until it was brought to his attention. Not saying that once it was brought to his attention, it wasn't a genuine like, oh, my bad. I am so sorry. I should have thought about that. I just don't feel like it was unprompted mm-hmm. by well- his conversation with Julie. You could you could be right for sure. I will say that most of his like foot and mouth things have been like when he has to make a call like on a split decision. So having a whole day to think about it or a whole night at least, it's possible he could have thought about it. And I want to give him the benefit of the doubt. Like it would be Not disappointing really. if <laughs> that's fair. It would be disappointing if Julie prodded him and coached him on what to say that would be very disappointing and it would be disappointing that they didn't show us that absolutely but like you're showing everything else you could show that right. too but mm-hmm. it, it was a genuine thing and he did have time to think about it and you know we found out later that he did i'll rescind but as of right now no i'm not giving this man a bit of a doubt because i don't feel like he Mm-hmm. deserves it right now he's not owed that from you so not for me at all and no. it, I, I don't think i want to give it to him but they do have the conversation we talked about a little bit before and this is a problem again that i had with Tulu. i felt like she was extending so much common courtesy and giving jake the benefit of the doubt that she refused to do to jewels and i was like why is that why would you I mean, I'm sure having more time in the house with him right. and more time to talk to him and genuine conversations and da da da. But you didn't even think or try to have that benefit of the doubt with Jewels. You didn't even try to have those genuine conversations with him that we saw. It just felt very much like you made a decision and you just stuck with that. That's it. This man is. I don't, mm-mm. don't trust him. Don't want to trust him. I ain't go trust him. He's done. And I hate that. I'm like, why would mm-hmm. you not extend the same common courtesy of benefit of the doubt to Jewels that you did to Jake when you saw the stuff Jake was doing? You saw the the actions that he showed you several actions of how he just disregarded your feelings. But you were like, oh, I feel like yeah. it's genuine. And like you walked away with the I feel like this conversation was genuine and it could have been, but you just didn't extend the same benefit of the doubt mm-hmm. to Wales that you did to Jake. And I found that very mm, yeah. a little off-putting for me. Yeah, I get what you're saying. I do think there's different dynamics um, at play here, the, especially the fact that one of her best friends in the house is Julie, who is close to Jake. So that gives her an incentive to try to mend things um if she wants to keep her friend happy so i think there's just so many like subtle nuances that make it kind of a different situation especially since she she barely knew jewels at that at that point but i do agree it is disappointing um and she didn't have a night to sleep it off with jewels yeah they did they did they had a whole night to sleep it off well not not after so they had their first initial meeting but not at the point when she got her vote taken away that was the same night that is true so i think at that point that was like the final straw for her and yeah i i don't know how much time she had between but that whole process of when she got her vote taken away and when they cast the vote it was still the same night yeah true yeah i guess it's still but (laughs) anyway we find out that Bryce, well, Bryce found out that Simone's oldest child is non-binary. Mm-hmm. And he seems, at first, I agree, I 
at first he was like, oh my God, that is so great. I knew I could talk to you. And I was like, oh, is he not binary as yeah. well? That's awesome. Great for you. Mm-hmm. That's why he's, he's, he's a cis, straight cis male straight. presenting, which is great. I just was a little confused with how it was presented. I actually yeah. did. I confirmed with Bryce because I was like, wait, I, I feel like it didn't give us the full story there. What are your pronouns? Um, but yeah, he, he confirmed with me that it is he, him. Um, which is cool because he cool. seems like he is very much an ally, mm-hmm. um, which, I mean, we need more of that. We need more of that because that's one thing that uh, a lot of people just cannot wrap their, like even a lot of people I know in the gay community, they're like, I can't, I can't do it. I can't use they, them pronouns for people. And it's really disappointing um, because it shows like a lack of like, of empathy again, like that it's not something you can relate to. So I'm not going to accommodate to it, but I, I really think Bryce like showed his character here that he was excited to hear um, that aspect of Simone's life with her child. And he seemed very supportive of it. So I thought that was great. He seems like a really nice guy, honestly. Yeah. I mean, it, it seems, he seems very nice. I agree with that. I was like, I was confused as well. So I'm glad you asked. And um, because we, we, we all, everybody has the right to be called what they want to be called. And if their pronouns are they or them, and they want to be called they or them, how hard is it just to change it? Sure. It feels weird at first, but after a while, it, it just it becomes human nature. It's like, mm-hmm. oh, yeah, they. They want to come. They want to be here. I, I I went to the store with them. It's fine. It, it, I'm a 45-year-old woman, and it took me a minute once that everybody, people I know were like, oh, I'm he, they, or I'm they, them. I am she, they. And I was like, oh. And you might mess up from time to time, but if it's just putting in the effort. Just exactly. like if your name is your name, you want to be called your name. I'm not going to sit here and call you uh, Divad because that's not your name. But I don't feel like thinking about your name being Divad. other than Divad. So your <laughs> name is Divad for me. It's so rude. Like, is. name is David. Call the man David. Yep. That's it's it. just a lack of respect, honestly. Respect. Like- Absolutely. Absolutely. So I did appreciate that about Bryce that he was like, I. I Love that. And because honestly, I thought he was the queer representation for this show. And I was like, okay, he's queer. And then I was like, oh, no, he's not. He's mm-hmm. he he's this straight white man. Which with is a girlfriend you know, of six with years. A girlfriend of six years. And I'm like, beautiful. Beautiful for you. You go, girl, because you got a good one who done made a million dollars by the time <laughs> so a period, period. Ain't mad at you, sis. Um and I, I like that. I love, but like you said, he seems like an ally, and we, I know the LGBTQ plus community needs more allies from straight people because people, those are the voices that people listen to because they're not listening to that community. That is why they're screaming and shouting and saying, "Hey, we are a community who deserves respect. We deserve the same treatment. We deserve mm-hmm. this." And if the people who are not in that community, it's like, hey, yes, they do deserve this. They do deserve treatment. They do deserve fair, you know, that's who people in power listen to. So we should all be that voice for all the communities who need that. Exactly. In, in, in certain communities. So I appreciate yeah, especially that. Especially marginalized communities. Absolutely. Uh, we, should, we should be the first to support other marginalized communities. Absolutely. That's why it's so frustrating when I see people just not willing to accommodate or show that respect, you know? Absolutely. Absolutely. So then we had, uh, Tulu has a conversation with Whitney, Julie, Jay, and Lindsay. Mm-hmm. And she brings up her conversation with Jake and was like, it's very genuine. I uh, prefer we just not, she said, I prefer not to vote because I think I squashed the beef with Jake squashed for me. And when he's like, I'm not going to vote. Julie said, I'm not going to vote. Lindsay said, she's not going to vote. Mama J said, oh, I'm voting. (laughs) And I was like, yes, mama. 
<laughs> I'm sure we were both like, yes, get Jake. Get Jake. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yes. <laughs> I was like, you still vote. She was like, I'm I'm voting. And mm-hmm. I was like, yes. And so Julie was like, who are you voting for? Because I she assumed Mama J was gonna vote for Jake as well. And Julie was like, who are you voting for? Mama said, I would rather not say. Just know I'm not <laughs> voting for you guys, but I would rather not say. And everybody was like, Red flag. So, I mean. It would have been a red flag for me because she ain't voting for me. So I'm like, you do what you do, boo. Mm-hmm. You do what you do, mama. Because it's not a red flag if I know she ain't voting for me. That a red flag is when she was like, mm-hmm. if she never said, I'm not voting for none of y'all. She just said, I'm, mm-hmm. oh, I'm not going to tell you. I'm That's like, fair. But if somebody's in my alliance and they're going to go like rogue, I at least would want to know a little information. I guess she's giving them some information. She gave them a little. So it could be worse. But like it shows me you don't trust me. When and she probably shouldn't trust everybody I mean, in that room. I, I think she don't trust Julie. Mm-hmm. And I think if she would have just been talking to Winnie and Tulu, she probably would have told him. Yeah. I'm voting this way. I just don't think she trusts Julie. And I don't know how close she is with Lindsay, but she's just like, I'm going to keep this woman's alliance together because it makes me stronger and mm-hmm. I'll do that. But I don't know if I trust everybody in it. So therefore, I have to keep some information to myself. And she was she's like, she gave some information. She's like, just no, I'm not trust- I'm not voting for any of you. Mm-hmm. For me, if I was in that situation, I'd be like, all right, I, I can only respect your wishes because if I keep pushing, then it looked like I don't trust you either. Well, who do you think? Well, why won't you tell me? Oh, I thought we were supposed to be in an alliance, but you can't tell me. What well, then? It's like, oh, okay, you don't trust me. I don't trust you now. That's, that's that's it. Just know I wasn't voting for you. I I mean, I understand why you would want to know because you like in Julie's case, she want to know so she can figure out how to counteract any all of this. If it is Jake, how do I counteract this? Mm-hmm. If it's not Jake, do I leave it alone? But I don't know what it is. So because Julie yeah. is very much trying to keep Jake around. Yeah, it probably could have uh, removed a lot of tension if if she had just been pretty open with uh, with with what her intention was here. Uh, but what if, but she didn't know what if somebody went and told Trump. That's true. Um, also, can I just say maybe it's the Big Brother fan in me, but I really wish they had a name for their alliance because I, I keep wanting to call them something other than the women. You know. I know. I, I agree. It is. Yeah. <laughs> It's the big brother in us all because the alliance name would have been like, yes, the whatever they name would be. The Vipers. The Vipers, the Savages. I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> but it would have been great for them to have one. But the who, African they, Queens. <laughs> Jesus Christ. The African Queens and their allies. <laughs> uh, yeah. Who knows? But um they um so she, they were like, when he was like, well, she don't want to tell us, she ain't got to tell us. And they were mm. like, yeah, that's fine. We respect you. You know, we just know it's not us. And yeah. And we get a confessional from Julie. She's like, I want to save Jake. <laughs> I got to do what I got to do to save Jake. So I'm like, uh oh. I was getting worried that she was going to go rally some votes against Jay. Mm. And yeah, I, I would not have liked that. Yeah, I thought she was just gonna go start telling Jake and Brian and you know Gaspar mm-hmm. we got to vote out Mama Jake. She's coming for you yep. and break up the trust between. But she, I think Julie is also smart enough to know she needs the Women's Alliance to still trust her, mm-hmm. but she still wants to keep Jake. Like Jake is the only person that she wants to that she would put her neck out for. Like Brian and Gaspar and Bryce, she won't necessarily mm-hmm. do that. She don't really feel the need. Jake is the only person she feels the need to put her neck out for, but she also knows it's more of them than it is him and her. So she needs to kind of play it a little smart. Mm -hmm. And we do hear them all agree that uh, even though they know Jay is planning on voting, they're not going to tell anybody. They're going to keep that between them. They're going to keep their trust between those five. So right. nothing should slip, not even hints. Right. Not even hints. Let's They'll fast forward to table time. <laughs> table talk. Brooke comes in and lets them have their talk and say she'll meet them by the cliff. And Julie is like, so, does anybody here plan on voting? 
And she looks right at Mama J. And everybody's like, No, I'm not no, voting. I'm not no, voting. I'm not no, voting. No, no I'm not or voting. Or people say they're not voting. And Simone is like, Oh, but some people didn't say anything. That's scary. Some people didn't say they're not voting. <laughs> and they're like, the oh, I don't, I don't, I'm I'm not voting. I'm not voting. I'm not voting. I'm not voting. <laughs> so then we go vote. <laughs> well, Simone calls it out. She's like, wait, I did not hear everybody say that they're not voting. And this is where we get Jay. Being like, why are we asking this question? What is the point? And that's a good question because who's going to be like, yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm going to go vote. I'm going to go do it. No, well, this nobody's is anonymous vote. Yeah, there's no incentive to 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 be vocal and answer that question honestly. So it really just does seem like I don't know. It seems like performative almost to just it, ask a question. Absolutely, it was very much performative. It was like, well, why, why are you voting? I'm not. Why would you say that? Why would you mm. even tell if you're voting or not? Like, mm. you know. I couldn't tell who was more annoyed by this question between Winnie and Jay because <laughs> they both were not having it. Because it was stupid, and we and they knew what she was doing. Mm -hmm. It was like we know what you're doing. Well, she's like, but and we'll, we'll talk about it. But it was just, it was, it was a, it was an obvious move that she was trying to make. And they didn't appreciate it at all. And I don't blame them. I wouldn't appreciate it either. Mm -hmm. And Tolu uh, says, I don't want anybody voting on my behalf here. Right. <laughs> like if, if you want to try to right any wrongs against me, don't because I'm good now. Right. So then we go to the vote and Julie goes down to vote and she casts a vote to counter Jay's vote. Mm -hmm. So nobody will go home. Right. And then Jay goes to vote and she makes her vote as well. And this, I think this was the first time I can't, I mean, maybe, maybe you figured it out before me, but this was the first time that I realized that if there's not a majority, if it's a tie, then nobody goes home. Exactly. I, I saw, they said that at the, on the first okay. episode. I missed so it. I knew. Yeah, I, I knew that was the case. And that's why Julie did what she did. She was trying to counteract any vote that Jay was going to put on Jake to make sure that Jake, it was just nobody goes home. Right. But then we get the votes happening and Brooke comes in and she was like, the trust has been broken. And the person going home. And I was so moment, confused right here. I was like, wait. Did a and second person said, vote and for the, Jake? And she said, and the person goes home. Julie's eyes was like, somebody's going home. And that in that moment, she knew she effed up. And Simone <laughs> got voted out and eliminated. I was shocked. I was shocked. <laughs> I was not. Okay, because I, I was certain would, Jay was voting for Jake. I knew Jay was not voting for Jake because of the way she was like, the way she acted when Simone was like, I'm not mad at you, Jake. I'm not mad. And Jay said, she looked at her and she looked, she was like, okay. And I was like, oh, you just pissed <laughs> off Mama Jay. In that moment, she like, I can Jake, I know that snake. I didn't know you were a snake until now. And mm -mm, you will never be on my side. You will always choose him. Mm -hmm. And it was that moment I was like, Mama J is not playing. And when everybody was like, Jake is fine. When Tulu said she trusts Jake, had a conversation with her, and they're okay. There's no beef. Mama J was like, oh, okay. I ain't got to worry about him right now. We'll worry about him later, but I ain't got to worry about him now. But I do got to worry about a snake who ain't trying to be a snake, but is acting very snake-like. I saw mm -hmm. it in her eyes. And my only thing was, I didn't, I didn't, I didn't, I wasn't surprised. 
I was like, she ain't picking Jake. That obvious. Mm -hmm. And if it was that obvious, we would have got that at the last episode. They wouldn't have left us on no cliffhanger for no, un, you know, surprise. True. <laughs> Yeah, my thing was like she just seems so upset with the misogyny. But I guess mm -hmm. Jay said the only thing worse than a misogynist is a woman who aligns herself with misogyny. With the misogynist, period. Mm -hmm. I was like, mm -hmm. I, where's that X? I, mm, it's coming. <laughs> it's. It's coming because, baby, I was shocked. I was like, well, not shocked, but I was like, I was ooh, shocked. Jay, you were shocked. Man. And I'm sure a lot of people <laughs> were shocked. But. Yeah. But I actually did feel pretty bad for Bryce in this moment because, like, he just made that connection with Simone and he starts crying and, like, you could tell that he's he's very sad to see her go, uh, but other people are really mad. <laughs> like Jake, especially, is is mad. He's he's throwing a fit. He's like, she was an angel in this house, <laughs> Brian. She was an angel. We just do. I was like, of course you would think she was an angel, Jake, because she had your back the entire time. But everybody was a little post upset. Some people <laughs> shocked. Some people were like, oh crap. Julie. Some people are pretending to be shocked. Right. Jay is like, oh, I don't know what happened. What is what is going on here? I was like, mm, yep. Love Jay. I love Jay. I was like, yes, girl. You. Mm -hmm. She is solidifying herself for me as somebody who I am very much rooting for. I don't care what happens in the rest of the game. I'm rooting for Jay. <laughs> Mama Jay, if you want to come on this show and talk about your experience, we would love to have you so I can yes. fangirl over you. But, oh, you're iconic. She oh. very much is. Oh, I love Jay and so much. I was like, yes, mm -hmm. yes. But yeah, we see Jake uh, with a group of people and he's like, whoever voted out Simone, the angel is a scumbag. Meanwhile, Julie is standing right next to him. <laughs> like, what the heck? I did that to save you. I tried to save you. Mm -hmm. I didn't know. It's just like, well, well, Julie, well. <laughs> but um, so, of course, we get the rap circle back moment where Winnie is annoyed. It's mm -hmm. like, why did she ask that at the table? And Mama J was like, and look right at me. <laughs> Like, why would she do that? And it, because Julie at this point went and told Salou mm -hmm. what she did. She told Salou that she voted for Jay, I mean, for Simone to counteract the vote that she thought Jay was giving to Jake. And so Salou was like, Oh, you were trying to save Jake. Just what we assumed you would do. And you did it. And so now Winnie is mad and Julie I mean, and Jay is like, oh, no, what's happening? <laughs> like, why would she ask that question? Why would she do that? And then Tulu comes in and is like, y'all know. <laughs> <laughs> Julie also voted for Simone thinking you, Jay, was going to vote for Jake and she wanted to counteract that vote so nobody went home. I knew and it. <laughs> Do that. I knew it. I told and when it's like, see, I say it. I don't fully trust that girl all the way. And she is mm -hmm. so much into this man. And I don't, I was like, mm -hmm. I really like Winnie. <laughs> we haven't talked about her enough, honestly. But she I think she's kind of staying under the radar, but she's saying what we're all thinking. Absolutely. Like her confessionals are everything to me. I'm like, girl, I relate. I relate. I feel what you're saying. Because she's mm -hmm. like, I'm not going to do this, but if somebody else do it, I'm, it is what it is. <laughs> and her confessionals and Lindsay's confessionals are what I'm living for. It's yep. so good. And Mama J's crocheting confessionals. <laughs> yes. Those are the three I live for. I'm like, yes, yes, yes. Please tell me more. Let me see more. And they were just like, I knew she would do that. I knew that's what that girl was about. This is getting a little... I don't know how we feel about it. When he was like, I don't know if I fully trust this girl. I don't know if I can 
trust this girl to not vote me out over Jay. Da da da. You know. are that girl. I knew you were. That's a drag race <laughs> quote. <laughs> And that look, that is a very much a quote that we say in I am like, you are that girl. I thought you were. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You are that girl. Got it. Mm-hmm. And that's what I think that they thought about Simone. She's like, she is the girl we thought she was. Cool. Um, so the next day, we get a barbecue going. They out there having barbecue fun. Everybody eats beef. <laughs> Brian loved and Whitney was like, I don't. Like, okay. I couldn't tell who it was that said that they didn't. <laughs> it's like, everybody loves beef. He was like, I don't eat beef. What else you can have something else? I don't know. <laughs> it was so funny. Well, Brian is, um, is the grill master. He cooking the food. Everybody's like, yes, Brian. Yes, the food's delicious. We're having a good time. Winnie's the bartender. She's mixing up the drinks. Everybody's having a good time. And then here comes Brooke. And she's like, we're about to play shuffleboard. Yep. It's a game. We're playing games. See, we're having fun. Folks are playing games. Now, you can go put some money in the pot or you can go for immunity. But you got to hit this little bitty target at the end of the shuffleboard to go for immunity. But you can get $1,000, $2,000, $3,000 if you hit the shuffleboard right. So everybody's like, okay, cool. So Lucy said, look here. I ain't never played shuffleboard. I ain't never seen shuffleboard. I don't know what shuffleboard is. I don't know how to do that. I, I don't know shuffle nothing. I don't. But I'm going to try. And she takes the turn and it goes off the edge. She's like, nope. <laughs> well, everybody else goes. People hit. Some people don't. When he was like, I'm going to try. She, whoop, go off the edge. She's like, oh, guess black folks don't shuffleboard. <laughs> That is correct. We do not shuffle more. But I would love to. It was funny. No, but it's, it was so funny. It was just a moment of just funniness. And people hit some money. Julie hit three thousand. Yep. She got her hero mo- moment after got saying uh, moment. Got, right. she's never done it. She's like, watch me get this three thousand. And she did. <laughs> and she did. Got her moment. I was like, okay, Julie got the money. I think they raised what eight thousand dollars. I think it was ten. Oh, ten. Yeah, ten thousand so. dollars. Yeah, I knew right. nobody was gonna go for that immunity. Like it, that would like, be stupid. It would be. It would just honestly, that would be more of a reason to vote you out the next time. <laughs> Absolutely, because obviously you don't trust anybody. So, um, then we have Winnie talking to Julie about her choices from the previous night, and Julie has some regrets. She's like, oh, mm-hmm. I don't know if I did the right. Thing. We got rid of Simone. We should have did it. I should have just left yep. alone. I should have trusted in Jay, but I thought she was going after Jay. Shouldn't have asked that question. Right. She's like, why did you even ask the question? And I was just like, uh, she has she has she has regrets. She has some she didn't know why, but it was kind of like, well. But do you again. have regrets because you're being confronted about it? Yeah. Or are they genuine regrets? I think it's the the former <laughs> I think it's the former I think so too because right after that she goes to pull the side and takes it to the cliff she's like look I voted for you I mean I voted for Simone to keep you safe because I thought Mama J was going to vote for you she told me she was going to vote but I thought but she didn't tell me who she was voting for and I thought she was voting for you so I counteracted with Simone to keep you safe only to find out Jay voted for Simone as well. And so that happens. And he's like, Mama Jay was voting for me? Is she coming for me? Like, that's all he heard. How did, yeah, I was so confused. I'm like, why are you on this revenge tour for Jay coming for you when clearly she didn't come for you? Clearly she went for Simone. Because if she wanted yeah. to come for you, she would have came for you. But he's like, Mama Jay was coming for me? She told you she was going to vote? But she was going to vote? And she's like, she didn't say who she's voting for, but I didn't, I assumed it was you because she was mad at you. And he was just so stuck on that. Then all of a sudden he was like, oh, you did that for me. Thanks. I appreciate it. No, really, I appreciate you doing that for me. But Mama Jay was coming for me. I was like, no, <laughs> she, she wasn't coming for you. If she was coming for you, she would have came for you and Simone would still be here. Right. But now he's mad because she got rid of Simone. 
and I, I'm on this revenge for Simone. I got to do this for Simone. I'm like, you know what? Sure, yeah. Jake. So much for keeping the family together. He's ready for Jay to go. Right, because she's a wild card, and we don't know what she's going to do. Sure, Jake. <laughs> sure. So Jake yep. wants Jay to go up. Absolutely. She's like, I want him to go up, but Julie wants him to keep the secret because she knows she can't tell the girls. Well, they she'll lose her trust with the girls. And she kind of threw the girls group under the bus mm-hmm. with Jay. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think it's becoming more and more clear where her loyalties lie. Yeah. Her loyalties. Uh, she she has been I'm digmatized. So yeah, she's been digmatized and they ain't had to dick. And I'm just like, girl, <laughs> how? How? He ain't even kissed you yet. And you fawning. You mad. Like, this girl was literally getting mad because Jake was doing, not picking her for things. He didn't pick her to be the smartest. He didn't pick her for this. He didn't pick her. She's literally getting upset. And I'm like, this man don't know you. He know you for three, four, five days, maybe. And you mad like y'all been dating for 20 something years or two months and he don't like me. Like, girl, grow up. Grow up. Seriously, grow up. She is one I don't want on the show. I will not be reaching out yep. to Julie to come on this podcast. <laughs> I don't even want her on the show because I probably will lose my patience with Come on in, Julie. <laughs> I will trap door myself. <laughs> no. <laughs> but, yeah, I just, uh, it was just kind of, she was, it was, uh, ugh, gross. So then we, of course, have the cards come back, the key cards to go into the vault. And nobody really wants to go into the vault this time. Nope. Nobody's like, I don't want to go. I don't want to go. So people are celebrating getting the black card. They're like, yes, I don't get the vault. <laughs> because have we noticed the people who've gone in the vault, the first two people are now gone. First oh, two people in the vault are first two gone. I did not even think about that. Yeah, I'm like, uh, I wouldn't want to go to vault either. So I'm going to go because if the way it's going continues to go, the next person will be either Bryce or Gaspar or Jake. Mm-hmm. Because those are the next people in the vault. So I'm just like, well, well I'll be quiet. But um, so the vault happens and um, the next people who get to go into the vault who pick the keys uh, it was uh, uh, Bryce and Jake. <laughs> Poor Bryce. Bryce didn't want to go. Really, no, he's like, I've been. I don't want to go again. <laughs> yeah, I just did this. I don't want to do it. Oh. Mm-hmm. And it really came down to Gaspar and Bryce again. Yep. And they were like, I was like, are you kidding me? Why? <laughs> Gaspar's like, yes, but sorry, Bryce. Sorry, Bryce. <laughs> <laughs> it was so crazy. I was like, well, poor Bryce said, and, he, and Bryce was like, I don't really want to go down there with Jake. Jake is a very much alpha dude, probably want to mm-hmm. take over. And everybody felt the same way. They were like, Bryce is just go do what Jake say, because Jake is that, he's that dude. And he's going to probably bogart his way and just make Bryce do whatever Jake wants him to do. And so... Mm-hmm. Bryce kind of felt that way too. He was kind of like, I don't really want to go with him. I don't, I don't. Can't blame him. I can't either. I don't know. But so the offer was kind of interesting for this one. The first offer was each of them get $10,000 from the trust if somebody goes home at the next ceremony. Or you add 2K. 2K is added to the trust for each person who does not vote. For the next ceremony. Mm-hmm. Now that was, I was like, that seems like a no brainer to me because you, you get $10,000 for yourself, great, but then you put a target on your back. Or if we all continue to vote, not vote, we can get $18,000. True. But even losing a person, does add more to your own pocket exactly. Exactly. than the two thousand if if nobody votes. So, right, it's kind of like it's. I feel like if you're playing for the group, then yes, you will always play for the group. Mm-hmm. If you're playing for yourself, this kind of offer would tempt you. You'd be like, uh, 
uh, $10,000 is a lot of money to add to what I'm already getting. Yep. And I just know there's some people that are watching Netflix right now and be like, see, look, it's all the women that want to get rid of people. It's all the women. <laughs> They're selfish. <laughs> Absolutely, because women can't play games like men and not be considered right. evil and calculating and mistrusting. Mm -hmm. But trust, if this was the male alliance doing it, everybody would be like, applauding, like, yeah, the boys are doing it. Can't believe it. We'll have some of us will be like, ooh, this boy steamroll is sick. It's sickening. But other folks will be like, yeah, I don't see a problem with it. Mm hmm but we oh. we leave off the episode on kind of an interesting note because they're mm -hmm. still in the vault and Jake is using the opportunity he has alone with Bryce to be like, you know what? Even though we could add 2000, I think we should take out Jay. We should try. We should try doing that. And he cannot read the room because Bryce is making it so clear that he does not want to do that. He's like, I don't want the youngest person to be voting out the oldest person, that's not right. a good look. Exactly. But Jake keeps pushing it. Mm -hmm. Will it work? <laughs> Will it work? We shall see because we are going into episode four. Mm -hmm. We're there. We are here. And like I said, we got left off with the vault with uh, Jake and Bryce. And they reveal, they finally come up with their decision. And they reveal the decision that they took the $2,000 if nobody votes each, if nobody votes. But then Jake had to pull out his speech, though. It was like, I just want to remind everyone. A beautiful angel was taken out of this game yesterday. A beautiful guy, a beautiful angel. So let's be of the family that we say we are. Mm -hmm. I think he's not. he's making it clear, at least in my mind, that he's okay with some stray votes yep. uh, going for revenge, whether he's the one doing it or not. And you know what? I wasn't the only one who picked up on that. Nope. Tolu yeah. also did. Uh, yep. She... she Sorry, totally. Uh, she also uh, picked up on the fact that Jay needs to be protected at this point. Absolutely. And I'm like, what are you doing? What are you doing now? You all are not going to be getting 2K because everybody's going to be tossing around votes. Right. It's it's like he 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 just dropped a grenade in a room and then ran off. Absolutely. Absolutely. It's Jake being Jake, and everybody's like, well, how does he say that? Like, I don't understand the speech, but okay. Um, then when he talks to Tulu about her concerns with Julie and how Julie will choose Jake over them, I mean, she's not wrong. <laughs> mm -hmm. She's not wrong. Yep. She's not wrong at all. Um, then we, of course, have Bryce, who is talking to Lindsay, and says she won't, he wants the opportunity to tell the group that he is the millionaire. Why? And why? why, Bryce? I'm sorry, Bryce, why? you might be watching. I hope you're watching. I hope you're watching, but I still want to know why. Why? <laughs> this, this is the cup. We keep things very real here, Bryce. We appreciate you for all the good that you did in this game. But mm -hmm. this decision, I was like, why? Why would you want to tell anybody? You got it off your chest. You told Lindsay. Why yep. do you feel the need to tell everybody? Because everybody don't feel the same way as Lindsay. We saw that at the table when it was just announced as a secret and they didn't know it was you. Like, mm -hmm. why? I mean, I'm sure it's very hard for him to have conversations, talk about his life and just cut. Because that's a huge part that you have to cut out. Because not only are you cutting out that fact, but you have to. It's a ripple effect. Like yeah. so much of your life is impacted by your wealth. Yeah. And so you he's probably having to constantly just cover up various things. And I'm sure he's getting tired of that and he probably wants to have like an idealistic game where everybody can be more judged for their merit and their character and mm -hmm. not for their wealth. 
and that's great. But that, that's great. That's not in how theory. these games work. That's not that how these great games in work. theory. That is great on you know in you know in like like yes, we live in the utopia world that we want to live in. That would be great. Mm-hmm. But in these games where people are, it's about greed and it's about money that you already have. And they're like, if you're not here, we get more. You don't need it. So it just. I just would have never, I could have never, I would have just stuck it through with just leaving out parts of my life. But the fact is he doesn't know anything but wealth. That's all he knows. He Mm -hmm. was born into the wealth and then he made wealth himself. So he only knows wealth. So it's kind of like he don't even have a place that he can pull from that he can talk about that's still him. That's not wealth. True. Yeah. Like it's, it's do, probably really hard, honestly. I, I do probably, feel bad for him for that. I, for that, I, I do. feel bad, but I'm still like, why? <laughs> like, why? I love. I, I did appreciate Bryce in this game, but I was just like, I don't think that's the wise choice. <laughs> like, you don't want to do that, but he wanted to do that. Mm-hmm. So um, then we had Winnie and Jay talking about their issues with Julie. Yep. And a, like I say, everybody is right to have these concerns. Yeah. It's I, fair concerns. I'm really starting to see a hard path for the five women yep. to get to the end intact. It's, it's not happening. It's not happening because there's always that one. Mm-hmm. It's always that one that'll be like, but this guy, but I like him. He's so mm-hmm. nice. He's so sweet. <laughs> he makes me feel all good. And emotionals, emotions is something. It happens. And I think Jake is, I'm not saying Jake don't really like Julie. I don't, I'm not trying to say he's not really interested in her, but I think he realized this game and how he can see how much she's just like a puppy dog running behind him. Like she's doing all the chasing. She's following what we see. And this is only about what we see. We only see her going to him. We don't see him coming to her. We see her going to him, her going, can we sneak away? You know what I'm saying? Like she's doing the initiating and the running up behind. And it's like, if you got him under your thumb, he's the one should be running to you. Mm -hmm. But I don't think you have him like you think you do. And I believe Jake will take her out for Brian any day. If it came I mean, down between Brian and Julie, he's picking Brian. I think you could be right, especially based on something we're going to see in a little bit here. Um, but we do, we do have Brooke. Uh, she comes, and we we get to our vote. Um, there was not a lot of buildup before this, so that mm-hmm. made me that made me think things were probably going to go a different direction this episode. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. Yep. So they all go down there. They have the opportunity to vote. And um, then we we have Brooke come back. She says things are a little different this time. And I'm like, okay. Different how? Nobody was eliminated. Which means $18,000 gets added to the pot. So good for them. Good for them. They're growing it back. Especially after that 10000 they lost early. I don't know what the pot's up to now. Yeah, it wasn't. We did. They haven't showed a tally. Mm-hmm. It's got to be around two seventy, I think. I would think. I think so. Yeah. But it, yeah, they hadn't showed it since for a couple of rounds, so we haven't mm-hmm. seen it. Um. But yeah, we we everybody is like excited because the the trust was not broken. They get the mm-hmm. money, and um, yeah. So everybody's excited and like, yay! So then it was like, all right. New game. New thing. New <laughs> day. You're all excited. We want you all to be excited. And we're going to give you a fancy pants dinner party. Mm-hmm. We got this fancy pants dinner party for you. And we go we go do that for you. And everybody's like, okay, great. So she's like, but I'm going to ask you a couple of questions. And she was like, who do you want to go on this dinner date with? Mm-hmm. And yep. so... Um, Jay picks first. Yeah, Jay picks and Jay picks Lindsay. She's like, I'll pick my roommate. Mm-hmm. So Lindsay and Jay go off to the dinner date. And then Jake turns pick. And Clearly so it's she, gonna be Julie, right? 
absolutely right. It's a dinner date. Why would you mm -hmm. not pick the girl you like for the dinner date? Jake picks Brian. And I was like, <laughs> anybody else see those flags just darting at you right now? Like, red flag, red flag, red flag. Julie should be happy, though. <laughs> Julie's like, no. Oh. She doesn't okay. need one more reason for the other women to think she's too close with Jake. I mean, she should. I think if Jake is trying to play that way, that's a smart move. Mm -hmm. But Julie, you would think she'd be happy. But no, she's not happy. Nope. He picks Brian. Oh, he want to have a dinner date with Brian? Oh, 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 okay. Enjoy your romantic dinner date with Brian. I was like, <laughs> girl, calm down. Calm down. It's called playing a game, but you won't know nothing about it because you're too ready to have romantic sweet honey time in the <laughs> middle of a game. Absolutely not. So then um, Bryce picks Julie. She's mm -hmm. like, yeah, great. And Winnie picks Tulu. Shocker. Right. <laughs> so who's left all by the lonesome Gaspar. Oh, we finally get to talk about him. We get to talk about Gaspar. Because <laughs> we ain't heard nothing from Gaspar in three episodes, except when he went to the vault. Yep. But even that. now, we don't have a lot to say. No, no, nobody picks him. Mm -hmm. He was worried he was going to get eliminated for. Yes. And part of me was like, what if? What if they just cut him? I would have been like, yay. I wouldn't have been mad. Just be, been mad. No, nothing against him. He's just not really bringing much. To He's not show. giving me anything. No, He's giving me nothing. But he goes to the table, sits at the head of the table, and then Brooke leaves, and then she comes back, and she's like, "Oh, one more thing, Gaspar. Since you didn't get picked, you get to pick who goes on this adventure tomorrow." And you could choose yourself if you want. You can go on this luxury adventure. Great adventure. So Gaspar's like, oh, I pick Brian. Mm -hmm. It's like, okay. Like, okay, you're going with Brian. Cool. Good. And then he said, and who's good? I'm like, yeah, he's going to go with Brian. That'd be cool. He said, and I'm going to pick Julie to go with <laughs> He's like, I don't want any spotlight. I don't want to be in the TV show. <laughs> I, I want to stay where I am. I want my purple edit. I don't want nobody to know anything about me. So send in Julie. Mm -hmm. And Julie is like, oh, my God, this is the nicest thing anybody's ever done for me. Mm -hmm. He's like, because Julie has, I feel like Julie has gone around and told her story to everybody who mm -hmm. listens about how hard of a life she has. Now, here's, mm -hmm. hear me out here. I do not, I'm not uh, invalidating her feelings and what she went through, her circumstance and her life that she went through. It was a hard life. She went through it and that was hard for her. But sometimes I feel like she uses that to guilt people into doing what she wants them to do. Mm -hmm. And we'll talk about that in just a second when Bryce decides to Share his secret with everyone. He's like, listen. No. <laughs> He's like, hey, hey, I can't do it anymore. I can't hold back this anymore. I have to tell you all. I feel like we're a family. I can tell you this. I am the millionaire. We knew it. We've been new. We've been we knew new. It. This is we everybody. Knew. Everybody's faces. We knew. We knew. Cut to Julie. Julie's like. Julie. <laughs> and Jake is like, I could feel the heat coming <laughs> off of Julie from sitting next to her. She is livid and she was pissed. And Bryce don't make it no better mm -hmm. because Bryce is like, and I get to wear my Armani shoes. Oh, no. I, I, I'm almost certain that Bryce is watching that back and cringing a little bit like I know he didn't like he was just having fun in the moment but he has to know now that that was not a good look that wasn't the right time to do that 
I don't think it's ever a right moment to just be like, <laughs> unless you're around other people wearing Armani shoes. But you like, I'm wearing my Armani shoes. Oh my God, I had to hide my Gucci toiletry bag or my Louis Vuitton bags and my Armani watches and my Gucci glasses. And now, oh, I feel free. I can wear it. I was like... <laughs> And that was my face the mm. whole time. He was, I was yeah. like, I do. Oh, I, I like Bryce, but but I, like I really Bryce, but that was, this was not handled the best way. Ooh. And and we get a confessional from Julie, and she's like, I, I, everybody just is so happy for him at that moment, and I just don't understand because like. I, I just don't think he deserves to be here. And at the very least, it's not fair that he's here. And I don't agree with that. I think it's fair. And I think he deserves to be there. You also have the opportunity to take him out if you want. Like, exactly. I but he like deserves to be there. Everybody deserves to be there. Nobody, this is, nobody said when you were filling out the application for this, that you can, you can only fill this out if you're not a millionaire. Right. If or you else, have money... Why no. not take the the poorest of the poor people and just bring them there? I mean, right. then we'll get Squid Game is what we get. <laughs> we'll get some craziness happening because people are now super, super greedy and I mean, everybody poor. But like, mm -hmm. this is not that kind of thing. Like, I have a problem when people do that, like even on Big Brother, when they're like, oh, you're an attorney. You don't need to be here. You don't need the money. That's not the whole purpose of why you come to do stuff like Big Brother or Survivor or any. You do it for the social experiment of it all. Yes, money is involved. Yes, other people might need more money than you, but that doesn't negate why you're there mm -hmm. or what you wanted to gain from being there. It's just, like I said, the, the whole deserving aspect of it just bothers me because I feel yeah. like everybody who gets there deserves to be there. Exactly. But does everybody need to be there is the thing. Some folks don't need to be there because they have the money. Bryce doesn't need to be there, but he wants to be there. Mm -hmm. And I feel like if somebody wants to be here, let them be. Yeah, now, if fair. you don't agree with why they're there, take them out. Exactly. That's the that's the nature of the game. Yep. So I be petty, girl. Be <laughs> petty. Be like, oh, this boy don't need no big no. Mm -mm. Next vote, Bryce. Like that's literally what I would do, and he would have to go. But she's she's just like he doesn't deserve to be here, and I, and I deserve to be here. Like that whole conversation she had with him earlier in the other uh, episodes, where she's like, people with kids probably deserve to be here more, but I feel like I deserve to be here more than a millionaire. And I'm like, I don't know if that's the case yeah. because just because think people have money don't mean they're fulfilled. Because maybe he doesn't have friends. Maybe he came on right. his show to make friends and have new life lessons that he needs to learn of how to become a better person. Mm -hmm. You know, seeing people who is who are not rich. Maybe he's so surrounded by rich people. He don't know how people who don't have those riches live and how they, you know, express themselves, how they do things. Maybe he wanted that diversity and culture and you know, life lessons that he's, he's 21, 22 years old, yeah. 23, you know, so he's still learning. So I'm like, I don't think it's more of, he doesn't need the money, but he probably needs the experience more than he needs the money. And I think that's why he's there. Mm -hmm. I agree. Yeah. I'm happy he he's there. And I honestly hope he makes it uh, as close to the end as possible. Um, even if he doesn't get right to the end. Um but then we, we have a conversation that's pretty interesting. He wants to go talk to uh, Tolu and um, he he's having a pretty like uh, intimate conversation with her about kind of his background. And, and she's wanting to know she has questions like, did you did you build this yourself or were you born into to wealth? And he says, I I absolutely earned what I got. Like I I started um I started as a realtor and I earned this money. Um, but then she, as she questions more, he reveals the fact that he actually does come from a wealthy family. Um, so he, I'm not sure why he didn't say that up front because it, it did seem to contradict itself a little bit, but I, I get, I get what he's saying in that, like, yes, he actually did earn his wealth. 
-hmm. but he did have a leg up. He had a, a pretty big leg, leg up. And I do think he realizes that he mentioned several times in this conversation that he does have privilege. He recognizes his privilege. But even so, I, I don't think he handled this conversation as well as, as he could have. And I'm sure he's he watched this back and probably has regrets over some of the way he expressed himself because Tolu leaves this kind of feeling like he is victimizing himself for his wealth. <laughs> I can't wear my, I, I felt so trapped because I couldn't wear my, my designer clothes here. And I felt like I would, couldn't be myself, but now I feel like I can wear express and mm -hmm. wear my Gucci's and my Blueys and my Armani's and my Prada's and all the things. And it's like, I'm happy you feel free, but you're still free with things that, None of us have ever, like, we've never had this. I didn't, I could, I know Tulu was like, I didn't have the Pradas and the Balenciagas and the Gucci's and the, and the Armani's. And you're like, I just couldn't wear it. But now, and it was funny because Gaspar said something that was like, I mean, I knew it because I saw his Louis Vuitton toiletry bag. <laughs> and I'm like, Louis Vuitton toiletry bag. Oh my God. Like, that's when we put our stuff and be getting all dirty on the inside. And he got a toiletry bag of Louis Vuitton. So it's kind of like, yeah, I understand. I just, I, I I think he meant well, but it just came out very mm -hmm. unaware. He yeah. wasn't very self-aware of how him, it, it felt very braggadocious and he wasn't trying to be braggadocious, mm -hmm. but it came off very braggadocious. True. Even in the next conversation, he also like talks to Julie. And I think he almost comes off more braggadocious in this one because he's talking to her. He, he says, I recognize it come from a place of privilege. And she says, it must be nice to say that. And he's like, it is. It is. It is. Very Just nice. the way he said it. Yep. I don't know. I don't think he meant anything by it, but I wish he had delivered it with some more humility and be like, yeah, it's it's nice to say that. But like, give a but and, at least. Right. It's always it's nice to say that, but I understand people who don't get to say that will think mm -hmm. that I just don't care. But that's not true because I'm very right. empathetic to everybody and their strife. I just because here's the thing: this boy can't help who where he was born. Right. He can't help that his family had wealth. He cannot be like he he. he that's just who what he knows. So we can't be mad at him for having money. He has mm -hmm. money. That's just his life. Your life sucks. Sorry. But that's just life. We can't be mad at people's stations in life. All we can do is accept people for who they are and try to get to know them as a person, not as a, a bank account and not as a, you know, a, a race, not as a, a social standing, not as a, you know, gender standing, just get to know this person as a person. And then maybe we could come to some kind of common ground. Julie is very much like, I've been broke. I've been broke to the point where I had to eat out of garbage cans. My parents didn't love me. I have abandonment issues. Um, all of these things stacked against me and I still had to pull my way out of the trailer park. So I'm very proud of myself because I did it for myself and you can't ever see how I do it because you didn't do this. And it just feels like, and I get her point too. Mm -hmm. Because it's like, yeah, we ain't always been, you know, have the most money. We struggle. I've struggled. I, I've been hungry. I've been almost homeless, if not homeless, you know what I mean? And it's like, I've been there. I've done that. And you come in here in this game well, we're all trying to fight for some money and you don't even need it. This 22, whatever we get is a drop in the bucket to what you already have. Yeah. And this is like, you're just, it, to, I think for her, he seems greedy. Like you're mm -hmm. coming to do more. What I It's a game of greed. <laughs> what it is, what I understood where she was coming from, but I didn't like how she said it. Yeah. She's like, I'm, when he was like, I don't, I came in here for the experience. Da, da, da. She's like, well then take the experience and leave. And yeah, she like, said, you're here for relationships, but you're getting relationships and, and money. money. So take the relationships, leave on the last day. And don't get the money. And I was right. like. 
Was Maybe he was already planning to do that. Maybe. It, we don't know. Me. it would not surprise me if that it was already part It would surprise me if he was already going to do that. But let him have the experience. Mm -hmm. Don't try to diminish his experience because he has money. Yep. But I, I understood what she was saying. And mm -hmm. I agree. Like, if you it's are complicated. here, just, I'm like, if you are here for just the experience, then take the experience and on the last day leave. And give the money to people who you know need it. Mm -hmm. But I don't know. I don't know. But um, <laughs> so then we finally get to see um, they get up and go to the next day. They're going off to their adventure, Brian and Julie. Mm -hmm. And they're going to the safari and they're going to see animals and do things. And then they go zip lining. This reminded me so much of being in Bali um, last month, like just like the whole like area. It looks so familiar to to my trip to Bali. And I was like, oh, I wonder if they're there. It was so cool because it was such a beautiful sight and it made me miss it. I want to go back. I want to go back. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I would love for you to go. I want to go to Bali one day. I don't know. Yeah. But. And no, it's not because I'm rich. It's not because I'm rich. I get free flights. That's how I went. <laughs> <laughs> not you want to put that out there. Like, I know. You know. I'm like, wait, I, I sound like I'm bragging. Oh, I went to Bali last month. No. <laughs> you seem so braggadocious. Why don't you take the experience and leave, David? <laughs> I, I stayed at a hotel that was $35 a night, and I split it with my friend. So <laughs> I went for cheap. <laughs> wait, not David trying to audition for the trust season two like i don't want nobody <laughs> to think i'm rich because nope. i am not <laughs> i don't want julie watching this hating me <laughs> <laughs> he went to bali i can't go to bali <laughs> girl <laughs> okay but um uh, we do then see them zip line they're having a good time everybody's having a great time and so while they are at the place getting zip lining and all kind of mm -hmm. adventure to the things. <laughs> right. The um yes, our home with a spa day. Mm -hmm. I was like, oh well that's nice. That almost seems better. <laughs> yeah, for me it would have been but I don't want to go zip lining. I don't want to go do all that. I would rather take the massage, the manicure, the pedicure, the facial. Mm -hmm. <laughs> But they all get the massage and, and pedicures and manic, manic, manicures and things. And it's nice, it's sweet. And uh, we see um, a conversation between Tulu and uh, Lindsay. And Tulu, they're on the tables laid out with the head and the breast. You know, you've seen those things where the head's mm -hmm. sort of in there. And so Tulu is like, make sure. Nobody coming. Now, for me, this is the wrong place to have a secret conversation. I was thinking the same thing. I'm like, you have no peripheral vision. Nope. When your head is in this thing, you have no idea who's walking in on you. That's what I'm like. I would have never had that conversation in that in that massage room. We'll have a conversation later. But I'm like, <laughs> girl, I'm like, Lindsay, remind me. Look, remind me to talk to you later. All right, let's get this massage going. And I want to just focus on the massage. We would talk about some random stuff. You don't have that conversation with your face down in the table and you don't know who's coming up behind you. But they're talking and Tulu is telling her, Lindsay, about the conversation she had with Bryce and how she felt like he was uh, victimizing his wealth and how he, she's just like, I don't know about this. I'm not mm -hmm. sure. She was like, next, maybe we need to vote out Bryce. I don't know. She thought he was telling too many half truths throughout the half -truths. season. Mm -hmm. uh, so, lacking some trust there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It all yeah. goes back to that word. Very much so. And um, um, we right see, before, yeah, we ahead. see Bryce coming around the corner. I'm like, wait, is he hearing her? I couldn't tell for sure. Me too. I felt like the editing was a little weird. Yeah, it's like he kind of lingered and was looking. And then it cut back to them. So I'm like, I don't know. Did he hear that? I don't know. But then we find out he did hear something. He wasn't eavesdropping, but he heard mm -hmm. his name. See, he's a good guy. He didn't just stand there and eavesdrop. I, mean, I would have walked in the room like, yep. 
Mm-hmm. He talking about me? But he said he tells Lindsay he didn't hear what the conversation was, but he heard his name. So he wanted Lindsay to kind of fill in the holes, and she did. She's kind of like, so to lose word about you and your money, and she thinks you, you, um, she she's worried about you and the money, and she has to be, you know, needs to be careful how he tries to connect with with them. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because that was not the way to connect with Tulu, clearly. <laughs> clearly, with Tulu, with Ju- it, it's, I think anybody who ain't got no money, that's not the way you connect with them. Yeah. You talk about how much money you got and how many designer stuff you wear and have and wants to wear and blah, blah, blah. We did miss a conversation. Bragging too. about going to Bali. <laughs> you know? <laughs> and then we talk about Paris next. You just... Oop. I, don't I wasn't going to bring that up. <laughs> I brought it up for you because I believe they was the rich one here. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> but we uh, we did miss a conversation that Julie had, not Julie, Jay had with Bryce. Because mm-hmm. Br- Jay was a little like, I think it's me. I think they coming for me. Bryce is like, what do you mean? Why would you say that? Knowing that Jake is coming for him. <laughs> but yep. he's like, what do you mean? It's like, I just feel it. I just feel it in my bones. And She's got good like, intuition for sure. She really does. And everybody, he was like, everybody's protective of you. And she's like, I mean, I hope that makes me feel good, but I don't know. I just feel it in my bones that people are coming for me. Yep. And um, so. it's so interesting to see who <laughs> who holds their cards tight and who does not, because he's holding his cards tight here with mm-hmm. information uh that he got from Jake. But Lindsay is not. She's spilling the beans to him. So I was a little yeah. disappointed about that. I mean, I yeah. get I get why, because he, she's already been a confidant for him. So I think she she probably has a lot of respect for him and wanted to be honest in that moment. But mm-hmm. I really hope it doesn't come back to bite any of the people we like. And he does not seem like the type that would be vindictive, like with that information. So I'm not too worried. I'm not too. We'll see. We'll see. So then we have Tlu and Winnie talking about Bryce and Jake, how they need to be next, and then seeing how Julie reacts once they get rid of Jake. And they're like, that's going to be the key if we can trust her or not. Can we at least switch Jake up on the priority right. and <laughs> keep Bryce Maybe. a little bit longer? Like, let Bryce stay and get Jake out, but uh, that, look, that's just me, David. We need to get on the trust together, and then we tell and we tell nobody we know each other. Right. And then you just know that you can trust me, and I know I can trust you. And then I'm like, all right, let's. Just, we hardly talk in the house. I'm like, I don't know you. You don't know me. <laughs> let's go. Look, go grow it up, David. Be the bro. I can't go around calling you my African queen. No. <laughs> <laughs> only if you want, only if you want to piss me off, so I can go tell all the women. We have to vote this David guy. <laughs> he won't stop calling me the African queen. He got my nerves. <laughs> oh, can you imagine? Oh, oh, we would. Oh my God, I would laugh so much about that. The, if you call me an African queen and we were actually on the show together, you go, I would just die. I would seriously pass out laughing like you're stupid. I would give it away. Don't do it. I would give us away. <laughs> but we, um, we we I don't think we could hold like we just have this connection, Lana. Like we make each other laugh too much. It would be so hard to it would be hard. I would just, we would just look at each other and start laughing, I'm sure. <laughs> it's happened on this podcast before. We just look has. at each other. And just start laughing over, but see, in that case, and I'm like, I don't know what it is about this David guy. We just have this connection that I just I feel like I can trust him. <laughs> I would use it like we just met, and I feel like I can trust him. And then after the show, they were like, Those two did a whole podcast together. How did we not see that? I don't know, <laughs> I don't know, but um, Brooke then tells. Brian and uh, Julie, that they are officially in the vault. Ooh. But it's a secret offer. 
mm-hmm. and they will talk to her individually. Yeah, I thought this was interesting because mm-hmm. I don't think it's been playing out the way they wanted it to because mm-hmm. everybody's taking the more safe option yeah. so far. Um, yeah. And I think it's because everybody knows the two that are going there yep. and you you don't like you have accountability. Absolutely. So it's really hard to to do anything greedy uh, when it's going to get back to the group. So I'm glad they're realizing this has not been working out. I don't know if this was like a last minute decision on a, production. Oh, I think this was a very much like this isn't working. Let's let's work. Let's switch <laughs> it up a little bit. Mm-hmm. But. Yeah, I was like, okay, well, so they have to go talk to Brooke individually, and Brooke is like, here's the chance to take this offer or not, but you won't know what's inside it unless you take it. Mm-hmm. She said, but I, I don't know what it is, just know it benefits you and not the group. Yeah. So that's all they know. That's the only information. If they look at the offer, they have to take it. If you take decide not to take the offer, you don't even look at it and you push it along. They don't even have to tell each other. And that was the thing. She's like, you don't have to tell each other if you take it or not. And I was like, in this moment, I probably would have been greedy. Yeah, it would be hard not to. Um, especially just not knowing what's at stake. Or re- My concern would be, though, like, okay, if I do... D- take the selfish option like let's say it ends up like oh i get twenty thousand from the mm-hmm. pot well, are everybody else going to be like wait why did our pot go down twenty thousand? i don't think they know the pot oh, they have not, not told them the pot okay so that in that thing in that uh aspect to me it's like if they don't know the pot they don't know how much money is in there true i mean for all they know over yeah for all they know i guess people could have been just taking away the money the whole time the whole time yeah they're just have i don't think they're emphasizing that enough that each each time that people go in the vault um what they're hearing they're just having to take it at face value like the eighteen thousand dollars getting added to the pot that could have been a whole lie a whole lie and they could have took the ten thousand dollars and been on about their way but then they would have had to vote somebody so that would have negated that not being true Mm -hmm. but you know what i do know brian's integrity is not for sale (laughs) no it is not he said take this offer and shut (laughs) it i don't want it i'm not (laughs) taking it because my integrity is not for sale it was so dramatic. It's so dramatic. He's like, my integrity is not for sale. <laughs> and Julie was like, mine is. Thank you. <laughs> she, she did not it. hesitate. She didn't hesitate. She said, I'm taking the offer. I was like. She just grabbed it and skipped off, basically. <laughs> and you- that's where they left us. Yep. We don't know what the offer is. We don't know what happened. We just know Julie said, I'm taking it. And they were like, chom, chom. I was like, oh. So hmm. now we have to wait till next week to find out what the heck this offer was and how is it going to pl- get into effect. But yeah. did you watch the previews? I did. Me too. I did. Some stuff is happening next week. It sure is. Uh... It's heating up. It's heating up. Yeah, it looks like uh, Julie's definitely getting called out. Um, so I really hope this doesn't backfire on any of the other women, um, especially knowing she could have a lot of power now. Yeah, I think it's shifting a little bit to certain people. Um, I can't wait to see what happens. Mm-hmm. I can't wait to see where it goes from here. Um, I'm sad. I'm sad, David. Me too. Like yeah. you said, the gameplay itself is fine. fine. But the social aspect of this, top notch. Yep. They got a good cast. Yeah. Because this easily could have gone south. It could have gotten boring quickly. Yeah, very so very much. But they there's people are holding it up and they they're doing what needs to be done. 
in far as keeping us entertained. And I can't wait to see what happens next. So next week we'll be back talking about episodes um, five, six, and seven. Ooh, somebody there is a cat that? fight going on right cat now. Cat fight going on in your house. Woo. Julian, who? <laughs> 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 that was a, a, a ominous preview for next week I think that was <laughs> something about to go down but we are going to be back to talk about all the, the, the drama and the shenanigans that go down we appreciate you spending time with us remember to send the comments in if you tell us what you think about these episodes mm -hmm. if you send in comments we'll shout you out in the next episode in our next recording we promise I promise you that we will do that for you if you do that for us tell us what you think about uh, this cast, how you feel about this show. If you're sat, if you're like, uh, I'm done with this after this, let us know how you feel. Um, I never put the banner up. Oh, I took it down because we wanted to see, but you can follow us on all of our socials at the cup pod because why not on Twitter, Instagram, and TikTok? We have some funny moments, we do some funny things, and we put them all on our socials. Mm -hmm. Um, follow, uh, Subscribe to this channel. Subscribe to our main channel. Subscribe to our Eurovision channel. We appreciate your all your subscriptions and things. If you want to um, help us monetarily, hit uh, the the dollar signs on our main channel. All the proceeds will go right back into this podcast to make it better and bigger and brighter. And also, follow me and David. Yeah, you want to? Cause why not? We're, we're, we're great people to follow and have fun on our socials. And if you keep scrolling down in the description, you can get the cup mug and the cup merch with all the things at lonagescreations.etsy.com. We appreciate your support there. And um, yep, on that note, I say it's time to go. So nice. um, as I stall to get to the right point, I'm not yes. answer. I'll say cheers, y'all. Cheers. cheers. I left my cup. Bye. Uh oh. Uh -oh.